Welcome to the lead. I'm Jake Tapper. We begin with the politics lead. President Trump this afternoon saying that talks with the Taliban are dead as he attempts to defend his now canceled plan to host the Taliban leaders at Camp David days before the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, attacks for which the Taliban has, even in recent weeks, expressed support. CNN is learning that Vice President Pence and National Security Advisor John Bolton advised President Trump that would be a bad idea, but the president calls that report fake news, and the vice president weighing in with a slyly written tweet, quote, that's absolutely right, Mr. President, more fake news, the vice president tweeted. The dishonest media never contacted our office before running with this story, he continued, which is not accurate in CNN's case. The vice president's spokesman is quoted right in the CNN.com story. Quote, and if they had, Mr. Pence continued, we would have told them, I fully support your decision. I fully support your decision, present tense. That, of course, is a non-answer and does not directly address the idea that before the decision was made, the vice president advised against it. As CNN's Boris Sanchez now reports for us, despite the contrary advice, President Trump was already attached to his brainstorm, the Taliban at Camp David. What could go wrong? Just two days after canceling a planned summit at Camp David with leaders from the Taliban that he himself suggested, President Donald Trump telling reporters today that peace talks are... Dead as far as I'm concerned. And we've hit the Taliban harder in the last four days than they've been hitting over 10 years. Trump, frustrated with the pace of negotiations, had called for a face-to-face -face negotiation with the Taliban at Camp David during a meeting over Labor Day weekend, despite objections from top advisors. Sources say Trump liked the optics of being seen personally as securing a historic deal in a presidential setting, where decades ago negotiations between the U.S., Egypt, and Israel led to the Camp David Accords. Officials say Vice President Mike Pence and National Security Advisor John Bolton argued against meeting at Camp David, but Trump overruled them. Today, Trump pushed back on that story, though he admitted he thought hosting the Taliban at Camp David just days before the 18th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks was a good idea. Actually, in terms of advisors, I took my own advice. I like the idea of meeting. I've met with a lot of bad people and a lot of good people it was my idea and it was my idea to terminate it. I didn't even, I didn't discuss it with anybody else. The meeting set for this weekend was scrapped because the Taliban claimed responsibility for an attack that killed one service member and 11 others. Trump now says he believes the Taliban regrets that attack. Some lawmakers voicing opposition to the meeting, including the third highest ranking Republican in the House, Liz Cheney, tweeting, no member of the Taliban should ever set foot in Camp David, ever. And GOP Congressman Michael Waltz, an Army veteran who served in Afghanistan. As we head into the, into the anniversary of 9-11, I do not ever want to see these terrorists step foot on, in, on United States soil, period. Now, Jake, President Trump moments ago on the South Lawn told reporters that the Taliban has made clear that they regret this attack. In fact, over the weekend, the Taliban put out a statement saying that canceling peace talks would only lead to more American losses in Afghanistan, Jake. All right, Boris Sanchez at the White House, thanks so much. Joining me now to talk about this, Democratic Congressman Max Rose of New York. He's an Army veteran who served in Afghanistan. He now sits on the Homeland Security and Veterans Affairs Committees. Congressman, thanks so much uh, for joining us. First of all, um, I guess my first question is, forget being a member of Congress, sure. as, a, as a veteran who fought in Afghanistan, what was your reaction to the story? Well, I think it was an utterly ridiculous idea, not only as a veteran, but also as someone who represents a district that was hit incredibly hard by 9-11. For this president to invite the Taliban to meet at Camp David in just a few days will be uh, the anniversary of 9-11. With that being said, though, we cannot use this one horrible idea as a justification or a pretense to advocate for another horrible idea, which is to stay in Afghanistan for another generation. To put it into perspective, come this October, young men and women will be enlisting in the United States military who were not born yeah. when we declared war against Afghanistan. Uh, this has got to change. We have to turn a chapter on this uh, period in American history and pull out of Afghanistan. So I want to get to that in one second, uh, because certainly this is America's longest war, and mm -hmm. I think the American people and a lot of veterans, uh, as you know better than I, are, are weary of sure. it. Um, but I do want to ask, because your congressional district in New York, which includes a lot of Staten Island, uh, that's a district yep. that President Trump won. And as you note, it's a district that was hit hard 
by 9-11, on 9-11, with a lot of firefighters and and members of the police force and and just people who were in the towers killed. Sure. Um, What are you hearing from constituents? Look, I I think people are happy that this is not happening, period. That's it. They don't want to think about it anymore. They don't want to entertain the idea of the Taliban meeting at Camp David. But here's the other thing about uh, people that live on Staten Island and generally folks throughout the country. uh, these, These are deeply patriotic people. And that does not mean that we engage in perpetual warfare. To be patriotic, to say that you support the troops, doesn't mean that we want to send young men and women unnecessarily into harm's way. Look at the conflicts that we face today. Look at global extremism. We can't fight global extremism, whether it's ISIS or Al Qaeda, by holding on to significant pieces of land in Central Asia. There's 15, 20 different countries that Al-Qaeda or ISIS could move into, and we have to remain flexible and versatile in order to attack that threat in the 21st century. Well, let me ask you about that, because I had Secretary of State uh, Pompeo on State of the Union yesterday, uh, and I asked about why invite the Taliban Mm -hmm. to Camp David of all places. Listen to what he had to say. Sure. We've been having conversations. The president believed that we could further that, that we could further America's national interest by having conversations with the people that have the capacity to actually deliver, Jake. We have an obligation to do everything we can. So you want to end the war. Absolutely. Secretary Pompeo wants to end the war. President Trump wants to end the war. His argument is we have to do, you just heard him say it, we have to do everything we can to end the war. So if having the Taliban at Camp David would bring that result about, why not? Well, you don't have to punch the American people in the nose in order to end our longest war. This was representative of more than a year's worth of hard diplomacy, okay? And we were right there, right at the end. And then the president engineered this into a vanity project. He wanted to be the one to take credit. And that is totally and absolutely wrong. This is an opportunity, though, for bipartisan action. I completely agree with you on that. Uh, And we actually have to take advantage of that. And this president, for once, could actually be a leader. You know, in 2016, he ran on ending our forever wars. In 2018, I called for the same thing. And you're right, you brought up that Staten Island voted for President Trump. They also voted for me. The people have spoken. They want change and they want action and they do not want us to continue these forever wars that are centered around regime change. One quick subject change because the New York Times just broke a story uh, saying that uh, Commerce Secretary uh, Wilbur Ross and the Commerce Secretary, Commerce Department controls the National uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, um, administration rather, NOAA, that Wilbur Ross threatened to fire top officials at NOAA after that tweet from the National Weather Service contradicting the president's claims that Hurricane Dorian might hit Alabama. The National Weather Service, uh, that NOAA then put out a statement, an un- unsigned statement basically backing the president's version of events over their scientists. What do you make of all that? I thought, I thought it was an Onion article when I first saw this. Look. This looks like it's a joke, and the unfortunate truth is that it's an ag- it's a, it's the reality. Congress should certainly look into this, but ultimately the president has got to lead. The president has got to realize that this is actually an incredible responsibility that he has, and his secretaries can no longer just be concerned about the president's ego. They also have to assume responsibility. I'm deeply disappointed by this. Obviously, it's breaking news, but it's yet another illustration of the fact that uh, we right now don't have the leadership that we need.